All right, good afternoon. I'm here to provide some additional investigative detail into the uh, police-involved shooting that uh, I first uh, told you all about uh, early this morning. Uh, last night at 9.27 p.m., our communications center received a call from a woman who was very concerned about the safety of a cab driver. She reported that her son was in the cab with the driver and was armed with a handgun and maybe threatening the driver. He was in this cab following the incident began. They verified her safety and she reported no threatening interaction with the suspect, but she did note that he said he could not go back to jail. Officers then met up with the mother and returned to her apartment with her at about 10, 11 p.m. last night. Once there, they determined the suspect had returned and was, in fact, inside the apartment. Officers tried to communicate with the suspect through the door to bring the situation to a peaceful resolution, but found the suspect agitated and uncooperative. During this interaction, the suspect eventually opened up the front door a few inches and officers attempted to enter the apartment. The suspect reacted at about 10.53 p.m. by firing gunshots through the door in the direction of the officers who were trying to enter the apartment. Patrol officers then set up a security perimeter around the apartment and evacuated nearby residents while talking to the suspect on the phone and asking him to surrender. The suspect actually said a couple of times that he would surrender and come out, but he never did. The investigative step of securing an arrest warrant for the suspect for three counts of aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer and one count of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon was also started. And the SWAT team was also called out during this time frame and began to arrive around midnight, relieving patrol officers who were manning the perimeter around the apartment. Telephone communication with the suspect continued during this time period. He continued to be agitated and aggressive in his language. He said that he had smoked flaca earlier in the evening. He said he wasn't going back to prison. He had threatened to kill himself. He said he was not coming out and was ready to die. And he ultimately said that he was ready to shoot it out with the police and they would have to kill him or he would kill an officer. A SWAT sniper was watching a darkened second story window during the time while SWAT officers were moving around the perimeter and relieving patrol officers who were then leaving the area. He observed the suspect open that window and then walk away from it. He continued to observe the suspect's elevated window position and saw the suspect emerge again, this time with a handgun raised and pointed in the direction of the officers who were moving around the perimeter at that time. The SWAT officer fired one round from his issued rifle, which struck the suspect in the upper body. SWAT officers then subsequently forced open the front door, which had been barricaded by the suspect from the inside and found him to be deceased. The suspect's handgun, which you see pictured there, was also recovered inside the apartment with the suspect. It's a 32 caliber six shot revolver. Four spent shell casings were found inside the apartment and at least two bullet strikes from the suspect's gunfire were evident on the inside of the door where the officers had tried to enter the apartment. The suspect in this case is being identified as 25 year old Terry Purcell Campbell. He was a convicted felon who was prohibited from possessing a firearm. He has a lengthy criminal history, which includes multiple felony arrests, and information on his criminal history will be provided for you by the PIO. The SWAT detective who shot Campbell is Robert Noss IV. He's been with JSO for 16 and a half years and is assigned to the Criminal Apprehension Unit in the Tactical Support Office. This is his second officer-involved shooting. And as I noted earlier in the day when we first spoke, we were joined in the investigation of the scene by both the State Attorney's Office and the medical examiner's office. So obviously we're still uh, in the first day of this investigation and it's active and ongoing, so I'm limited in what further details I can share, but I'm happy to answer any clarif question, clarification questions that I can for you. Director, first of all, can you spell the uh, name of the officer who fired the fatal shot? Sure, it's Robert with, with the common spelling. His, his last name is Noss, N-A-U-S-S. -S. And, and it's, he's the fourth. Okay. Where, where was he? Uh, he was he was on a, he was in a ground level position across from the apartment. And which side of the apartment was this? Inside of the parking area or out on the street? Um, it was outside of the parking area, the apartment complex. Okay. Yes, sir. So, what, do you know the distance? I mean, no, I, don't, I mean I know the uh, the evidence technicians that are working the scene are going to have all that measured in um, and done with with their diagram, but they're still they're still doing their work. I don't have that yet. Did you guys interview the cab driver? Yes. It was a she, and uh, just, just kind of what I went over earlier. There was no threatening interaction between the cab driver and the suspect, despite what the mom thought. Um, 
but he did make the odd statement that he couldn't go back to jail and had the cab driver following the mom's vehicle around the area. And at some point in time, the cab driver had enough of that and just dropped him off back close to his home. Was it a cab or a Uber? It was a cab. And did she say anything else about the conversation? Was there anything else that was weird? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Anything else? Uh, was there anybody else in that apartment when he was shot? No, he was in there by himself. But before the incident started, it, he was in there with his mom and his 20-year-old brother. And it was the same apartment, or was it in somebody else's? Nope, it was the same apartment that, that where it's, the whole thing started is the same apartment where it ended. I don't know. That was uh, well over 10 years ago, and I, I just don't have that information in front of me. What's the protocol when it's a SWAT officer involved shooting? Do they still have the use of force or something like that? Yeah, that's a good question. It's the exact same for every officer at the agency. So he has been placed on administrative leave um, pending the investigation. The patrol officers there did a really good job. I mean, it's very inconvenient for folks to have to leave their apartment in the middle of the night, and we're always sympathetic to that. But when you end up with a situation like this with somebody who's clearly firing shots out of, out of the apartment, we have, to, we have to get them out of there for their own safety. You said the subject said that he was on SWAT, but is there going to be a follow-up narcotics investigation as to where he got it from? Um, it's, it's just too early to tell. That's what he said. You know, we'll wait, and part of the, uh, obviously part of the investigation will be the autopsy, and exactly what's in his system will be confirmed by the medical examiner's office, and we'll, we'll take it from there. So that's where the shooting occurred, on that interior parking lot? No. no. I said it was outside the parking area. So on Mindanao? Yes, across the street. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. Thank you.